midst of an education funding crisis. They claim that they are keeping uh, cash per pupil the same, but every reputable body that looks at the costs in education, the Institute for Financial Studies being one of them, says that that means an 8% real terms cut. The situation for children when they are 16 to 19 is so much worse. Since 2010, there has been a 14% cut already, and then the 8% cut I've talked about comes on top of that. Students who've had a difficult time in compulsory education in schools and have left with few qualifications. FE gives them a second or sometimes a third chance, not just immediately post school but potentially later on in their life. We educate around 2.9 million people actually in FE colleges. This could be students studying for degrees or parts of degrees, foundation degrees, HND and HNC courses, A levels return to study courses, access to university, adult basic education, and English as speakers of other languages. Now this very rich tapestry of provision is under threat in all parts of the UK. It's been quite a systematic attack on the opportunities available for the younger generation by the current co the coalition government and then the current government. They started off with the cuts to EMA, there have been cuts to the Aim Higher, which was a programme for widening access to university. There have been cuts to the Connection Service, which was a service that supported young people in housing and social issues. There doesn't seem to be any sort of possibility of kind of enrichment. Um, there doesn't seem to be any possibility of sort of like taking the kids outside of the college, taking the kids on trips. All of that money seems to have gone. They are actually talking about making 19-year-olds pay for their A-levels. As soon as you start putting a price on it, you widen the social divide and you exclude people from that route, which further education was actually designed to bridge. There's been an increase uh, in terms of national insurance and pensions that colleges have to pay, which the NUT has worked out is about 150,000 a year. On top of that, we lose 300,000 on average per college for them not paying our VAT bills on goods and services, which schools actually get away with, they don't need to pay that. If we lose that £300,000 a year, it could be the choice of the college carrying on or not. Already, more than 70% of sixth form colleges have increased class sizes. Some of us have quite big classes as it is already, and I think um, having additional students in the lesson is not good for learning anyway. Courses have been cut which we would have been able to run because of the lack of funding available for them. And so we've had to narrow our offer and we've also seen the number of staff in the department shrink. The first things that have gone really is sort of like courses that haven't got quite as many uh, learners on them, the ones that aren't seen to be kind of worth as much money. The uh, major FE provider in the city got rid of its A-level provision pretty much entirely. One of my sons took four subjects at New College Telford. Three of them have now been cut. Some A-level courses have been cut at Shrewsbury. Um, this year, A-levels in food technology, IT, health and, so health and social care are no longer offered. More than 80% of sixth form colleges have stopped courses, including some of them stopping A-levels in sciences. The more the cuts kick in, the harder it is to provide that choice because suddenly every course is being weighed not on what it offers to the students, but actually what financial compensation we get from it. And I think as soon as you've got that becoming a driving factor in how you choose to offer education, I think you've got a massive problem for anybody that that education is catering to. The document the government put out says that they want larger, more efficient providers, which means they want to reduce the number of six one college and FE colleges in the country. You either go through an area review with the possibility of you having to merge with another college, but you still have to pay your VAT. If you don't do that, there is the option of becoming an academy and you get your VAT paid. The evidence shows we are the most efficient providers for post-16 education in the country, and yet the sixth form sort of and FE colleges are the only ones that are actually being put through this review, whereas academies, which are demonstrably less efficient, are exempt from the review. It feels like schools and colleges are being coerced into becoming academies, because the alternative is potential financial ruin. I think the reason the government are doing it is because they want 
to reduce the role of the state, they want to increase the role of the private sector in education. And part of that process is academisation and forced academisation. That will result in worse paying conditions for teachers, that will result in a narrowing of the curriculum and it will result in private companies, profit making companies having more and more control over our education system. <laughs> One third of sixth form college principals say their colleges will become financially unviable in the next few years and that underlies where these plans for merger are coming from. They come not because somebody is thinking there is a more rational way of planning, of running the education. They come because people are saying we can't afford to survive separately. We have to combine to try and find some savings. I regret to tell you that there are many examples where these mergers have not saved money. I joined a sixth form uh, in the Salford area that was uh, at the point where it was undergoing a merger with uh, three other colleges. The whole purpose of the mergers it was sold was to ensure financial stability. But but within about three or four years, class sizes started going up. There was about 11 redundancies. After I left, there was another 57 redundancies. What begins to happen is they begin to rationalise teaching at different sites. It doesn't, or my experience at Salford was, it didn't solve any of the financial issues. Uh, as far as I know, that college is still 1.6 million in debt. I think the biggest problem we have is the fact that we're a very rural county, so people are already travelling a very long way to get their education. We're worried that as a result of merging into larger colleges, people will have to go even further. With local government cuts at the same time, subsidies for travel are being cut, so people might choose a course based on what they can afford rather than what's right for them. Concerns over travel. My daughter has gone to New College Telford. We live in Shrewsbury. For one term, it is £180. My daughter elected to go to New College Telford. If we are not careful and subjects start to be stripped away from one college and provided solely another college, then that doesn't become a choice anymore. That becomes a necessity for pupils, and that is not fair. It is a college shifting the cost onto parents. I'm sure I'm not the only one in the room who thinks part of it is connected with the fact that the Tories think that too many people go to university. And what's more, too many people from working class backgrounds go to university. And I therefore think that what they prefer is to cut A-level provision in sixth form college, which offer it on a lot, to a larger degree, and transfer that to free schools. Because if you notice, there doesn't seem to be a problem in money there, does there? <laughs> Call yourself a free school when they throw cash at you like there's no tomorrow, essentially, because it's an ideological agenda as well as it's a financial one. Between Lord Harris and Westminster Private School, they're opening a sixth form college that costs £45 million to build the most expensive one that's ever been built. So you're absolutely right. There are choices that they are making. These things are not a necessity. They're choices that they're making. We've heard a lot from the teaching unions here today, and right, so, but we shouldn't forget, actually, that none of those colleges would open without support staff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They're going to cut the, the, the support staff first, yeah? Then they're going to go to the teachers, yeah? Um, you know, the, the, the counselling services, the, the, you know, all of these things that, okay, on paper, this is not what you come to college for. But without them, they, you know, they, they, how do we monitor attendance? How do we address different issues in terms of attainment? Yeah, and what are, what are the factors that go into a, a successful student? We've been told that not only do we have to get rid of the deficit, but also that the governing body wishes us to have a 3% surplus next year. The only way they can achieve that is by making savage cuts. Some of those will be teachers, but the vast majority will be librarians, technicians, tutors, receptionists, teaching assistants, site services, all those jobs that are already poorly paid so they will have to get rid of a lot of them. Lisa Galvin and I support right at the very start to say that when that attack comes on the support staff, that everybody in this campaign stands yeah. shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. Because it's not a question of us standing isolated in groups waiting for them not to come for us. 
because they will come. One of the problems with the area review is there's no public consultation whatsoever with it. So in a way we've got a chance with having a proposed merger in that we can actually have some public consultation involved in that. So we need you to get involved in the consultation process and tell the colleges what you want and what you want to hold on to. cuts have had a severe and significant impact on our workload, on our paying conditions, so we're striking to defend ourselves but also to defend education. We had a local strike about um, covering a class cover and how it adds an extra burden to your timetable. We won. It was very effective. The job of a teacher is quite a difficult job anyway. Most of us love it. I'm assuming nearly everybody loves it. We're under enough pressures as it is, and we are doing the very best that we can. It's a bit like, I suppose, we're striking, because um, if it's not broken, why are you trying to fix it? There's no two-way conversation between the Department for Education and the sort of people who are involved in it. And you saw that all through the years that Gove was in charge, and thankfully he's gone, but we're now still working through the aftermath of what was implicated by him. And I can't say that the current head of the DfE is any better, but they have to be some way of him engaging with us on it, and there really isn't at the moment. Think about what will happen if you don't come out or you don't ballot for strike. What will happen is they'll just be able to railroad these things in. This is effectively a vote about does the sector carry on? And yeah, we might not win. There's always the risk that that might happen. But if we don't do anything about it, we are going to disappear. There's just no other way of putting it than that. We just have no means of surviving the scale of cuts that is being talked about. The importance of strike action to me is that it sends a really clear message to this government that we, the working people in schools and colleges, are well organised and we know what's going on and we're not prepared to sit and let this government destroy what we've created. Sixth Form Colleges and FE Colleges have been created by and for the community and we're not going to stand around and let the government destroy them. The only times when things have changed for me, as far as conditions and payment and working hard to get deaf people a better life, is when I have got on strike. Mm -hmm. And I'm now a member of the University uh, College Union. I was a member of MUT, I was a member of MUS, which I joined in 1966. The only way I've ever changed anything is to collectively change by withdrawing my labour and going on strike. Absolutely. And, that's, and I feel, looking at wonderful people here in this room who are committed educationalists, withdrawing your labour means that the Tories can't win because everybody needs their teacher. Thank you.